What's up, everybody? I'm to hear more. Patrick Cloud. Welcome back to another episode of Damn Internet. You scary. Yeah. Uh, with the episode after the holidays, and my first question is: Have you held your nephew? Oh, I have. Yes. It happened on Thanksgiving, and yes. it wasn't on that. I was like, okay, for sure. <laughs> now I'm just gonna wait till Christmas. It'll be like a holiday thing. <laughs> this baby was born for a whole month and change before two you months. held two months about two months yeah october 1st before you held this child mm -hmm. yeah it wasn't that bad though <laughs> i feel like if you think about my reasoning it was it's pretty noble because no one has baby training like that unless you've had kids so like for someone to just be like hey i trust you with you know, my ch mm -hmm. my new child and somebody's just like, yeah, for sure. You know, I I, I, I was approaching it tactically. I asked questions. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to drop it. You know, him. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah. OK. All right. I yeah. have to stop calling babies it. Uh, you don't have to, but I understand the sentiments. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm sure you've held other delicate things before. You've held glasses, champagne flutes, you've held phones. You've held joy. I broke all of those examples though. <laughs> Every example I have, I've broken the flutes, I've broken glasses, I've broken phones. So it's just about limiting the risk. <laughs> that's that's fair. Uh how was the Thanksgiving? It was great. It was really, really good. Uh it was, I guess, um, you know, since it was my nephew's first Thanksgiving, it was very, very intimate. Mm -hmm. uh we had my my it's, it's still crazy to say my brother's baby mama <laughs> she was uh she was there male and uh yeah it was it was it was really it was really chill we were just uh ch chopping it up playing games getting drunk eating way i ate way too much did you i threw up yep you threw up i ate yep you got food wasted i got food wasted yep that you're, is true you're a slut it was bad, but it was so good. <laughs> what about you? Uh, I did two friends givings, one the day before and then wow. one after. Uh, both were fire, both were great, amazing food. Uh, I stopped eating until I get full. Like, I, I, I stopped doing that. Uh -huh. and so I just eat until I'm satisfied. And, like, like, if I feel like I can go back and get another plate, that's when I know I'm done. Like, uh -huh. anything other than that, you're going to get slumped. Bro, like I, I've I've had years of practice. You said you, so you now, feel like you could get another plate. When I feel you like feel I like can get could. another plate, that's when I don't. That's that's when I know I need to be done because the food hasn't settled in yet. It's just got right. there. It's just looking around. They ain't took the shoes off. It still got his jacket on. All right, and when that food gets settled, and then you put more food <laughs> on top of that, then that food gets settled. You like that, that's when you ready to die. That's food wasting. That's when you throw up. So you know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing that no more. I've learned my lesson from it. And we out of there. Yeah, Erica sort of eating till you throw it up is it's wild business. He's Pat's a wild boy for that one. I was just I was just yanked out of this place. <laughs> I was just like, yo. I saw I saw it and I was just like, um, uh, okay. I just kept talking. <laughs> it was in the middle of a good joke and everything. All right. <laughs> I <laughs> Did you, are you, were you big on leftovers this year? I actually didn't have any. We didn't take any food with us from either one of the Friendsgivings. And uh, we didn't really make anything. Fair made for the first year, first time ever, corn succotash. Succotash, excuse me, not succotash. Corn succotash. It is an assortment of corn. Uh, red succotash bell is real? Lima, be lima beans and some other stuff but it's all mixed together i don't know it's not like a stew it's it's just like it's corn succotash bro i don't i, I don't thought know that was it. a made-up thing that what's his name sylvester stallone the best, not yeah, stallone best of the cat, the best of the cat. <laughs> <laughs> succotash oh yeah. it's like a veggie dish yeah yeah i've never i didn't even know this was real it was good mm -hmm. yeah it was good have you ever had succotash though? No, absolutely. I would have avoided it with my life. It says it includes corn, 
lima beans, bell peppers, and onions. And you just eat it like a bowl, like a rice bowl? Uh, you get it like a side. You put it on a plate like you would mac and cheese. It's just a side. But it was good. It was better than I expected. I had to try it because Fran had cooked it. I was so skeptical. <laughs> you, was, you, you had to dip your toes in it first? Like, no, I got the smallest, <laughs> smallest spoonful initially. I tried it, but I, oh, it ain't bad, it ain't bad. It really tastes the grilled peppers. I, I tasted the peppers. I was like, okay, cool. It's not overbearing, but it's still present. It was good. Then I got a regular spoonful, but I was still like, all right, we're going to see what this do to my stomach. It's a weird combination I had together. What really threw me off was the lima beans. The lima beans was like- I don't think I've ever had lima beans. They say that you can switch the lima beans out with, uh, uh, what is it? Edamame, I think. Yeah, you can switch some. You can I like switch edamame. Some like do they do those two things? Like, do those taste the same? Edamame and 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 lima beans. I think it would have been a different flavor with the edamame, but it wouldn't have been that different. Edamame has a very, unless it's like the 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 garlic edamame, it has a kind of subtle taste to them to me, just a little different. So. I just have to clear this up. Erica sort is in the Patreon chat. I didn't. I didn't eat till I threw threw up. That sounds really gluttonous. It's not like I was like eating, eating, eating. I, I ate too much. Later on, I threw up. He's lying. I saw the pictures. Pat yes. had gravy. He was taking, people were taking gravy shots out of Pat's stomach. Oh, uh, he was eating with a button up on. The button up was unbuttoned. His dressing all in his chest hair. It was a wild <laughs> place. It was a wild <laughs> business, guys. Very I woke up business. several days later. <laughs> That's a wild time. Thanksgiving, it's just, once you get to a certain age, and uh, I'm at a point now, it's like, man, it's just, it's just a lot of food. And then back to back, Christmas, Christmas come right up too. Christmas really don't take no break. Christmas come right up, and it's the yeah. same meal right back. It's like, that's why we started doing like ribs and meatloaf and stuff for the holidays. Like, it up. Yeah, man, it gets too much. It's only so much dressing you're supposed to have throughout the year. You have dressed them maybe three times. Any team uh -huh. outside of that, you, you're you you're a serial killer, in my opinion. I don't. I, I was kind of the same way. I didn't have a lot of um, leftovers, and I think that's. I think that's the move because growing up, I would have we would have so many leftovers that I would just be eating the same thing for like what seemed like days. Mm -hmm. And this is like one of the first time I didn't really have any leftovers. I like. I basically like after Thanksgiving, I went right back to ordering food, <laughs> and then it's it's almost like now I'm looking forward to Christmas because it's not like I like ran that 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 meal to the ground. So even if it is a similar meal, I'll be I'll be good. Yeah, I um I what I got I got I think I got everything I wanted to. I got that mac and cheese, got some dressing, got the turkey, got some ham. Uh, yeah, I got I think I had everything I wanted to. So I'm not really looking forward to Christmas trying something that I didn't get. Only thing I didn't get was like, what I said, like the ribs and the meatloaf. And we might just order order from Boston Market. We just do that. I've been to Boston Market in a minute. Man, we've catered. We've had our Thanksgiving provided by Boston Market a couple times. So we was like, we don't really? like going to no store. We ain't cooking and all that. Man, out of here. That's Yeah, that's definitely how... That's more how I grew up. There was like a couple times where like it was like home cooked and everything, but for the most part, we just a avoided the the hassle. Cause to go through all of that and then have people complain about it anyway is must I, like that's why I, I I always like take my hat off to the like the big mamas, the grandmas, the the aunties that cook for Thanksgiving because they basically even if it's not amazing, if they cook all that day and then people come over and they're just like. This stuff and ain't it. I, I couldn't. I don't think I could cook again. I don't think I could cook again. Period. No, that the, the crazy part is, like Sunday dinners is is still a thing. I don't think it's like it's not as big everywhere else, but like certain places in the South, Sunday dinner can be as big as Thanksgiving dinner. There are people who still be cooking like that. There's a regular Sunday. You know, mm -hmm. they're gonna have the greens. They might have some stuffing. Damn. Uh, I was dressing rather um, mac and cheese, fried catfish, fried chicken. It's just like, nigga, that's a lot to start your Every week Sunday. Off. That's, every Sunday. That's heavy. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I guess it makes sense why people are just generally like bigger in the South too. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when we were at uh, when we were in Atlanta, they were saying that at the HBCUs they had like fish fries every Friday, yeah, and just like something else every Wednesday, like really, really heavy, rich meals like every week, as opposed to kind of like holidays, which I feel like that's when I do it. I did the fish fry at McDonald's for like two. Straight when they had the fish fillet on sale. That's not a fish Friday. fry. Hmm? That's not a fish fry. That's just eating a fish fillet on a Friday. <laughs> I don't see the difference. <laughs> no, I'm going down to the fish fry at McDonald's. And people are like, what the, what the hell? Fish fries come with fries and fish, sometimes pickles. That's that's my fish fillet. I just got the to go version. Fish fillet do be hitting though. I'm not even. Going yeah, lie. see, people coming out the woodworks. People coming out the woodwork. Okay, let's let's call it. Pat, your family do they cook dressing or stuffing? This is gonna tell me a lot about who you are as a person. Dressing. I mean, it's with cornbread. Yeah. And then they take the juice from the turkey after the turkey's been cooking. If you don't have that, you can use stock. But most people, like when they really be cooking, they take the juice from the turkey. Pour it in there, the, the mixed up cornbread, mix it around, and add the other the other ingredients. And they can sometimes cook it alone, or they cook it in a pan with the turkey, right? Or stuff. I mean, uh, yes, yeah, stuffing Nothing. is is in the red stove box, the stove top, right? What did you have growing up? I always did a uh, dressing, but okay, it was um, called both. Yeah. Like how you prepared it, too, but I yeah. always I, I need I need I need to know what you rocking with. The stovetop is I feel like it's appropriating the culture. Okay, that was white people's way of putting it together real quick. Didn't want to put it in the work. They don't have slaves to do the cooking for them no more. And they don't feel like doing it themselves, so they came up with stovetop. <laughs> stovetop is appropriation to the culture of dressings. This is just my opinion. Okay. I mean, to, okay. To be honest, I've had stovetop before, and I didn't mind it. I don't think it's Charlotte, terrible. Man. I don't, think it's, out. I don't think it's terrible. I've you never had it on Thanksgiving. But you I are it like. a moon cricket, porch monkey ass coon. <laughs> you selling out the culture, trying to please the white man sitting on his lap. I can't believe you, man. I know what it tastes like, and it's not bad. I've never had it with soul food or Thanksgiving uh, food. But I have had dressing that was called stuffing. Uh -huh. Like I've had it prepared like dressing and, and everybody that was around me called it stuffing one year or dressing. Mm -hmm. Like what it's called in, in my family has always been like both, but we've always had dressing on Thanksgiving. But I don't, I don't remember when I had stovetop. I think I, I think I had it when I was a kid. Well, and I feel like it... it it tastes like croutons. Yeah, you you said you had it and it wasn't with soul food. That lets you know right there you was committing a crime. Okay, because dress is only supposed to be with soul food. Nobody out here eating. But this was stuffing, things. huh? But this was I mean, stuffing. Stuffing is only supposed to be with soul food. Okay, you know you're not eating. You're not eating goddamn me, uh, Taco Bell with some stuffing. Uh. Yeah, you don't mix Taco Night with stuffing. Stuffing and and dressing should only come out during soul food. So wait, what do white people eat stovetop with? Anything. What's on the box with it? Green bean casserole, uh, unseasoned pork chops, uh, un, uh, smoked bear leg per your video. Oh wow! You want to you want to hear what's what's on the stovetop box? It's stuffing, peas and carrots, and uh, slices of turkey. That makes sense to me. Mm. That makes that, sense. That sounds like a Thanksgiving dinner. Stuffing. That sounds like a Thanksgiving dinner. Peas and carrots? I mean, uh, is that inside of it? You saying that, that, that peas and carrots? That was a side. Look. Look at the one that says sage or cornbread. You see how on the side of it, it's peas and carrots. That's nasty work. Peas and carrots, <laughs> then the stuffing, then... It looked like a TV dinner, honestly, but I'm assuming that's how most people eat stovetop. Hey, man, let's just 
Let's just call it dressing and be done. MTM said it's bread casserole. I think so. I bro, I, I feel like it uh kind of tastes like croutons. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta definitely get that. You need, you, right. need you need that cast iron skillet with that real cornbread. You know what I'm saying? And then mix that cornbread up. That's 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 what you need right there. That's what you need. Somebody in here has said her family does both. I'm looking for that 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 comment right there. Somebody Chicken. said their family does stuffing and dressing for the holidays, and I just want to know who who got the time. Okay, who got the, who got the a time? lot of cards? Who got the counter space? Okay, who got the stove top space? Why y'all doing two of the same, almost same items? One moonlighting as the other one. Hmm? That's like having that's having the rock and and his stunt double at your house. You don't need both of them. Okay, you either can afford the rock or you can't. The Rock was such a random example of that. All right, Tiff said stovetop ain't that bad. Okay. Man, that's one not, person. I wonder how, how universal that is. Oh, is I'm it, not I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm, that, I'm sticking to what I know, man. I'm sticking with the dressing, man. Dress, give me dressing and give me my cranberry sauce in a can. If I ain't got ridges on that cranberry sauce, I don't know how much to cut. Okay? I don't want that berry cranberry ketchup shit that the people be trying to bring. When and, they mix it up and put it in yeah. a bowl? You won't eat it yeah. like that? No, I don't want that shit, man. I need Why the not? ridges, baby. I need the ridges. The ridges let me know. I know how many ridges I need to justify how much uh, dressing I got. I, that's how I, I, the ridge will cover up one amount of the, 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 the half of the cornbread. I mean, not the cornbread, but the, the, the dressing. And then if I got something left, I need another ridge, right? If I'm just doing that with the, 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 the little spoon, nah. No, I need a full circle to know what I'm dealing with. Full circle. That that had to grow on me. I, growing up, those circles were nasty as hell. But what? Yeah, I, I I got into cranberry like in my teenage years. But I don't know. I feel like I don't see the circles anymore. I just see it like a almost like a jam. Nah, man. I give nah, circles. Nah, man. I when I went to the second Friendsgiving, they had me a can because they saw my video about it. They had me a can. Of the cranberry sauce waiting for me. Oh wow! Know. The crazy part is, I've <laughs> as I've got older, my taste buds have matured. I actually prefer gravy <laughs> over anything. But if I want some cranberry sauce, it better be out of a goddamn can. But yeah, so now wait, you mixing gravy with everything that you would mix the cranberry sauce with? Well, it's just the dressing. I just put the gravy on the dressing instead of cranberry sauce on the dressing. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Oh yeah, yeah, I do that too. I do that too. Yeah, I, I'm slow though because I found out this year that you're supposed to put the cranberry sauce and the and the dressing in the same bite. I was always eating them yeah. separate. Yeah, I, 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 I don't. I don't I'm, mm, that's too much sweet and savor for me. My oh, you don't do that? No, nah, it's, it's like grits. You either gonna have savory grits or you are gonna have sweet grits. But you don't mix the two. You don't have sweet grits with sauteed shrimp. Oh, That's people don't know that. I thought everybody did that. I thought that was the point of cranberry sauce. Because then I was like, oh, okay, I get it. But you do the cranberry sauce with the gravy on your dressing. No, 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 no gravy. Just like a spoonful of cranberry sauce and then a spoonful of uh, dressing on the same spoon. And then. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exactly how you do it. I thought you said you put the cranberry sauce. And the gravy on your dress. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I was like, what else you throwing in this party? Some bananas, nigga? What kind of person are you? Damn. I didn't have any banana pudding. I didn't actually have any uh, sweets or anything this Thanksgiving. Like, it was no pie, no. Oh, really? Yeah, it was all just straight. You said that's why I threw up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> What's going on for the uh the the Christmas holidays? You uh you in town? You out here? I think I am. I don't think we're doing Christmas though. I, I mean, we might you know go over some people's house and that's that's about it. But we ain't we ain't doing no gifts right now, man. We don't honestly don't need anything. And I'm not really big on trees. That what? I, I've become a Grinch to a certain yeah. degree. And it's like, bro, we spend this money on this tree that's going to die. We can buy a tree, right, and then keep that. But then that's that's taking up valuable storage space, right? And typically, we were like, we had got to the point where we were like taking vacations or we would go out of town 
doing the holiday. So it's like you spend all this money on this tree, and you're not even there to enjoy it on the day right. that you're supposed to be celebrating. So I was like, man, I'm not. If we get a little tree, it's going to be on the counter. That shit going to be on the kitchen counter. <laughs> Grinch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not. I, I, I'll, be, I'll be that. I, I'll be the Grinch. I definitely will be that. I'm not. What, for what? What? I, I see, what what do you need for Christmas? And fans always like, it's not about what you need or all of that for Christmas and your birthday. It's about what you want. I was like, I don't really want nothing. Only thing I want to do is just get out of debt. That's it. So unless somebody gonna drop a check on me for hundred fifty k, everything else is like, you know, I don't want to seem unappreciative. So just don't give me nothing. <laughs> that I mean, that's true. I feel like the holidays are kind of. Uh, and I feel like, you know, it's it's talked about every year how it's kind of just extra. It's like people kind of take the materialistic shit too serious just for it to be that time of the year as opposed, you know, to just stick it to what you are, what's really important. So exactly. I think that's a, I think that's a, a, a chill way to look at it. I'm just like, I don't know. I think that uh, for me, it's not like about gifts as much as it is like uh, experiences. Because mm -hmm. living in LA for so long and now finally being able to like travel and go places, I feel like I see that the reason why everybody loves LA so much is because it's the same all year. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like if you grew up in that same, it's cool to see like, oh, what's Christmas like in this city? What's Christmas mm -hmm. like in this state? So. That's kind of like my my more of my vibe this year is kind of just like seeing a different Christmas as opposed to just gifts, gifts, gifts. So that means you're going to another cabin in the woods. Something like to Panama. That. You're going to St. Louis. Where, where are you going, Pat? Huh? You I've just been decided. I'm uh, I've been screenshotting a bunch of places, but uh I don't know. Maybe somewhere random like Oregon. That would be <laughs> that would that would be random. That's you are dead set on going places black people ain't really welcome. The, the the names of them I've never even heard of them like uh, Lilydale, Lilydale, Oregon. Yeah, yeah, that's when niggas get killed for sure. Nashes. Oh yeah, they definitely still Sandpoint, Mount Shasta. Yeah, this list is all over the place. I mean, that's a great Nashville. idea. It's a great idea. I still want to do the whole cabin in the woods thing around winter you know something where it actually has snow but it got an outside jacuzzi so you can like you sipping hot chocolate or mm -hmm. beer in a jacuzzi get the the hot tub the heat from that and then the cool brisk air like that shit i think it will still be dope so i would i would i would, I would do that you should go to uh what is it fair fairbanks alaska fairbanks yep Hell no, nah, boy, I ain't going up there. My sister stayed in Alaska for like three years. I never visited her once. <laughs> but if you get a cabin in the woods, you'll get the snow. And if you go at the right time, you can. Uh, that's where the northern lights are. So you can just Ooh. be in the jacuzzi. Sky's all green and shit. Yeah. Right. Nah, I don't know, man. I don't know. There's a lot of hype around all of that type of stuff. I feel like I can go to, uh, what's the, the shit in, in, in uh, California? Big Bear? Oh, that's not the same. Yeah, it ain't the same, but I mean, you know, I ain't got to, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'll think about it, because Big Bear ain't for it all. We did the cabin thing in Big Bear, me and Farron. The only thing was missing was the jacuzzi, so you just got to find something with a jacuzzi. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was that was cool enough for me. That was, I, was, I, was, I was old, A-OK -okay with that, but the presents, ah, I'm, 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 I'm done with that, man. And then it's just a, the hustle and bustle of trying to find unique gifts. Now, luckily, Uncommon Goods has taken a lot of that stress out of it, okay? Because when you shop in Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses with fine products that are often made in small batches. So, you know, you, you can expect the best quality, um, high quality, they're often handmade and are made in the USA. So they have some of the most meaningful gifts that you can find anywhere on the net. Uh, and I love the fact that they got it all in one place. Sometimes you'll find a website, they got a couple cool things on it. Everything on Uncommon Goods is dope. Like you'll end up spending way too much money because you're like, this for this person, this for this person. Well, I got to get me something. What I look like buying gifts for all these folks, now get me something. I told y'all uh, a couple weeks ago, I got Farron uh, the bathtub tray. 
it suctions to the side of the tub and then the tray swings around so she can have a glass of wine. She has an iPad and a small little plate for some treats because she be eating the tub, you know, little, little, little olives, little chocolates, you know, that's her thing. Uh, then I also got this Bluetooth printer, uh, which prints out pictures in black and white. Um, and it's super dope, man. It's just stuff. I mean, we really don't be printing out pictures no more. That's why I got that because when's the last time you could say you took a camera to Walgreens or somewhere to get it uh, developed? Walgreens doesn't even develop in store anymore. They send it out. I think the best thing to do is go to Costco, but I don't have to do any of that because I got the Bluetooth printer and I got it from Uncommon Goods. All right. With every purchase that you make at Uncommon Goods, they give back one dollar to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than two and a half million dollars today. So you're really putting their, mo their uh, money where their mouth is. Um, right now, we're giving out a dope deal to get 15 percent off your next gift. Go to uncommongoods.com slash DIYS. That's uncommongoods.com slash DIYS for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer, Uncommon Goods. We're all out of the ordinary. Another dope thing about Uncommon Goods before we get out of here is that um, they make it really easy to shop. They have all the gifts separated by price points, like 0 to 50, 50 to 100. 150 to 200 or something like that and they also have it separated by who the person is so if it's your dad brother a uh, family member boyfriend or husband and the same thing with the ladies you got mom sister girlfriend wife all of that so you have so many layers to 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 choose from when it comes to shopping and make it super simple just check it out go on the website and you'll be like i ain't getting nothing you'll be like all right i'm gonna get a couple things i promise you check it out check it in Satan Club. You say what now? Satan Club. Okay. What uh what comes to mind when you think of a of a Satan Club? Um uh, niggas is red and black. You know what I'm saying? A couple people walk around with some horns on, uh, a lot of upside down triangles and goat heads. Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of why I'm landing at it right there. Did you picture in your head any kids there? <laughs> <laughs> but of course, it's ran by kids. They are the devil. It's ran by two year olds. <laughs> that's one thing I never really uh, associated with people who like Satan. I never thought there was like a fan base of kids. Um, apparently. There is. There was just a lawsuit in Pennsylvania. So the Pennsylvania school district just permitted an after-school Satan club. Uh, this is, they just settled, the school district just settled with the Satanic Temple um, because uh, they had a lawsuit accusing the Pennsylvania district of discriminating against students for denying an after-school Satan club access uh, to a school building. They, there was already a Satan club and they were denied access to the school building, uh, and they were saying that's discrimination. So there was a lawsuit, and uh, now now it's now it's allowed. They settled, uh, paying two hundred thousand dollars in attorney fees, and they granted the Satanic Temple and its uh, after school Satan Club equal access to school facilities. The group aims to establish clubs in response to existing religious groups and on campus without endorsing religion in public schools. Uh, the, organi the organization said the after-school Satan clubs are aimed at providing a fun, intellectually stimulating, and non, non prosel whoa, proselytizing alternative to current religious after-school clubs. I've never seen that word before in my life. Um, but uh, Jesus Christ, that word is a nightmare. Uh, uh, I bet the girls in that club freak as hell, though, boy. <laughs> freak as hell? <laughs> the girls in that club freak as hell, boy. You think that's why some dudes are in it? Like, they're hell, like, oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Like that. This little emo golf chick, man. She real chill. She's a cheap date. She don't want to do nothing but hang out and drink blood all day. Oh, that's a different type of freak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Man. 
Now wait, was this a middle school or elementary school? It says the Lay Valley School District. It doesn't say. Yeah, that's wild either way. That's that's it wild. Just keep saying school. That's a fun, intellectually stimulating environment is pretty wild. <laughs> Satan Club. Do you did you even like grow up knowing any Satanists? Like I knew they existed, but I didn't know any kids. I didn't know any parents. I didn't really. Yeah, they moved very covertly. They didn't really advertise it much. I mean, we assumed. <laughs> we just we honestly we just we just associated people who liked he he uh, heavy rock with Satanism. Like, yeah, just screaming to the mic, and you know, sometimes their lyrics or their artwork, you know, had that heavy undertone of Satan lovers and worshippers and things like that. So we just assumed. We just we associated them with that. We were like, yeah, yeah, I go on over there with the, that devil music. But right. the church automatically assumed rap music was devil music. Like anything with Bone Thugs and Harmony, they said Bone Thugs and Harmony had Satanists pray over the albums to yeah. capture more souls. And if you played it backwards, it had a message from the devil. It was like, first of all, I was all in. This is this is in the time of the cassette tapes and CDs are coming out. Fam, who the fuck? Can play it backwards. How would I even? How would I even know that? Cassette tapes. When I was buying radio boxes, yeah, but you can't you can't play it backwards. Why well, it just takes it back? It doesn't play it backwards. Oh, you're right. Damn, why I never questioned that. And I was just like, who who are the people that they're concerned that's playing music backwards? I right now to this day would not know how somebody was like, take this album and play it backwards and tell me what you think. I wouldn't know what the fuck to do. I'm like, how do I this is my how do I play this back? This like I really would be stuck. Okay, I'm like, okay, I'd record it on my phone and then maybe just drag my finger back. Like I do a voice note and just drag it back. I, I would not know how to play something backwards. If you said manually on a record player is all I can think of. Exactly. Exactly. When I, you know, when I, 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 I damn, if I'm a buy album just to try to listen to it black backwards while I manually spin the record, let me tell you what I ain't finna do. You know, you know, you know how many times I could jack off in that amount of time that I'm trying to do that. <laughs> Why would I do? It? And then after after I jack off, I'm sleeping. I'm going to sleep. I'm not finna do that. I have a lot of people to call now because <laughs> that is crazy. You know how I was. For a long time in high school, I was very subscribed to that, like the whole backwards devil. Like, like it was so crazy. They'd be like, "Look, listen to this song from the Beatles," and it would be like, it would kind of sound like something. I'd be like, "Oh, that's so spooky." I was like super into those conspiracies, and now that that's true. Like, why? Who the hell could play it, play it backward? Exactly. I'm, I, I, I was finding it out with the technology that you had to have had back then. <laughs> <laughs> I have, bro. MTM say you can play stuff backwards on YouTube. Yeah, but you, you, okay. I feel like the stuff that you can play backwards on YouTube is stuff that people have uploaded backwards, right? Can you, can you find something on YouTube to play backwards, and then it just it gives you that option? Because all I seen is skip forward, wine, and like, like. Twitter oh no, they had to doctor it up. They had to wait. How do you play a cassette in reverse? Fast forward the reel to the end and take off the loaded take spool and flip it over, then swap the spools over. And now you'll be listening to the tape backwards. Hip, hippie, let me tell you something. That sounds like surgery. Yeah, that's that's worse than a game of operation because all it takes is one little piece of that tape getting mixed up. Like if it, if it comes out and you got to try to wheel it back up and now it's bent at one part or it breaks, you got to put some tape. Man, listen, I've had my fair share of tape mishaps. I have never gone back to cassettes. I know Urban Outfitters and a couple other stores are trying to get it back popping for really? a thousand reasons. Yeah, they selling cassettes. Man, who the fuck? Who the fuck? Okay, How, now there's some, some car collectors who like to keep their car very stock, and those cars sometimes have cassette plates and cassette players, and they don't want to switch it out. Maybe then. Maybe then. But the average person most rate most cars nowadays don't even come with CD players. It's right. all streaming. So you got the radio and you got streaming. I'm not gonna go looking for no cassette player child. Okay. I can't believe that was a thing. 
Yeah. yeah. Hold. Wait, did they even have, if you had a cassette album, mm -hmm. was there track separation? Uh, no, the song went off, it was quiet, and then the next song came on. And I had a song list, so you know what stuff was. Oh, so you had to basically like fast forward, like if your last, if your favorite song was track nine, you had to. <laughs> Damn, I didn't know that. Yes. So, yeah. so that's why C everybody likes CDs because they were able to separate the music. Yes. Yes, you could just skip to the next song. You have to do that. All of that is 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 like cassettes <laughs> were uh. like VHSs. That's why when you were renting VHSs, they were like, please be kind and please rewind because when you took it out. You took it back to the store when they returned it. The store is not rewinding it most times. They, I mean, they they might, but it takes time out of their day. So initially, they would have you would make sure you rewind it, right? And then they came out with those things that like they were shaped like cars. Sometimes you put the VHS in there, and that would rewind it for you, so it didn't take any time out of you stopping in between movies. They had uh, they had the little thing just so you can rewind videos, bro. It was listen. We were living in the dark ages with technology back then. Damn, that's crazy. No, I mean, I that that makes sense for a VHS because I mean, a VHS is just a video cassette, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, oh, yeah, I did. but that, that makes so much sense because then, like, CDs, the whole point is like it has like the laser grooves, yes, of a thing. Here's okay. the thing with CDs, so like, <laughs> niggas telling their age right now. I love music, bro. So, like, I was one of those kids where I was always on my bike. But I love my music. So I had my boom box. I had, my mom had a little luggage thing. Or it was really like, just like a little cart that folded up. And it was just like, it was just a handle. And then it part folded out. So it looked like an L. I took that, took some bungees, fixed it to the front of my bike. Took a pillow, took two bungees, fixed that to the, the bottom of the L part. Took the boom box, set it on the pillow. And then fixed it around the pillow and and fixed it to the handlebars in the back of the, the L part of the, the cart to try and stabilize it as much as possible. Because CDs were great in cars and, you know, while you're walking sometimes. But when you're trying to ride a bike with a boom box and you hit one one little bump, I mean, it don't take much. So I had the pillow and everything. Damn. And then the other thing is that the radio I had wasn't huge, but you still needed six c batteries so the c <laughs> battery type six i would i would get maybe six to eight hours on 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 six of those batteries damn and that's if they was new bro and batteries weren't cheap for a kid that didn't have a, a job back in the day bro i was i was wild so wait you fashioned it onto the front of the bike or the back front of the bike on the handlebars okay and it was that crazy like because cool it was, it was, <laughs> but <laughs> now that I think about it, it's like, I remember hearing the music, but it wasn't as loud because the speakers are facing forward. So people would hear me, but I, I was like, the music wasn't super loud to me because I'm not even facing the sound of the front. Oh, you were just, head. you were just riding around playing for other people. That's I wanted a car very early, bro. And this was the closest thing to having a car. For what me. age was this? Bro, I had to be like 11, 12. Damn. Mm hmm Just blast. Was it like, what kind of music was it? I can't. The first CD I ever bought was Tupac, All Eyes on Me. I bought it as a cassette first, and then I bought uh, then I bought the, the uh, CD player. I mean, the CD of it. Uh, after that, I bought Spice One. Uh, I bought uh, Bone. Yeah, Bone about the Crossroads album. He's nineteen ninety nine. That one was crazy because that was like the first double disc outside of the uh, the Tupac All Eyes on Me, and then Biggie had a double disc too. But yeah, uh, the Fuji's album. I was rocking with the Fuji's album. Hmm. Uh, the score that one. Uh, Biggie's first album. Yeah, I had a couple of them. That's tight. I liked when music was like physical. That's why yeah. I have so many like records at my house. It's just like. It seemed like it was more fun when music dropped back then. Uh -huh. <laughs> like you're even saying, like, yes, it's a double dish, more, more music. But now there's just so much damn music, like just on one of these DSPs, like Spotify, like you, no one is like has a lack of music right now. Right. I just found this French rapper. 
and he he go kind of crazy with it. Uh, I don't know if he's a rapper or a singer. It's kind of hard to get the cadence because I don't understand the the, the, the language. I don't know how, how fast he's thinking. I'm gonna send it to you. It, it, it's pretty dope, though. What's his name? Uh, ba, 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 ba. I want to say Yame. He's like missing his two front teeth. He got he got a colors uh, performance that's pretty dope. Uh, just let you do it for me. Yeah, that that's gonna go right. hard. Though. Yeah, that really tight. That beat go hard the way he do that right there on that joint right there. I was like, yeah, I rock with this. I rock with this. Uh, who said that? Young Deuce, deuces. We did the cans. We did a bottle in the tire too, and then we did the card too. Now the can hands in the bike. Got, yeah, so you would put the can, you like squish the can, squish the can a little bit, and then you jam it in between the frame and the back tire. So when the tire is going, it's like because it's hitting the grooves on the tire. Oh. The only thing with that is like it could also mess up the tire, right? Right, that's what I was thinking. We'll, yeah, but we do the same thing with bottles too. The only thing is that it, it it made it more difficult to ride the bikes with the with the, uh, right. with the you bottle right there because you. You like riding the 10 speed on the, the highest gear, the toughest gear. And we did the cards too. We did the cards in the uh in the on the frame, take to the frame so it's getting the smokes and smokes in every time. That's the only one that makes sense to me, the card, because it yeah. bends. Yeah, but you have to reinforce the card because it bends and it breaks. So you put the card on there, but you reinforce it with like some aluminum foil and some plastic, and then you tape it to it. Tiffany was doing this with pine cones. What the was I the only one who was okay with my bike sound? <laughs> I ain't never heard it was I cause I don't know where Tiffany lived. <laughs> what bike? She, her, her bike was made of wood too. <laughs> Let me find out. You stay. Your uncle was smoking the bear. <laughs> Pine cones Pine on the cones? wheels. She was oh, an elf, no, elfish child. Dude. That, that, the that's, that's different. <laughs> he said she from Big Bear. That's funny as hell. <laughs> Yo, I saw this crazy story. Um, okay. You gonna like this one. This is kind of wild. You're a true crime fan, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> this is wild. This is the headline. <clears throat> a Korean true crime fan just got sentenced to life in prison because she murdered someone out of curiosity. Huge fan. So basically, I always thought it was like how we talk about it. Watching true crime makes you like, it's almost like you're interested in like how that, like the, the crime is solved, how forensics works, like how you could get away with it. But true crime made her an actual murderer. <laughs> she was like, I wonder what it feels like to kill like that. And she just got hit with that life. This happened in South Korea. Uh, Jung Yu Jung. Wait a minute. Jung let her intrusive thoughts win. Yeah. I mean, we all crazy. have thought about that. We're like driving. I'm like, I drive off the cliff right now. Or looking over a banister. Like, I'll jump right now. Like, you have those intrusive thoughts, but like, the regular person just mute step like All right, I'm wild, right? Let me let yep. me step back. She just was like, "Now nah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna kill somebody." <laughs> I wonder I what episode did it. But but like, you, do you realize what it takes to kill a person? Like, you have to figure out who the person is, or if it's gonna be a random person, when you're gonna do it, what time of day, where you're gonna do it, what you're gonna have on to make sure you get away, and what uh -huh. your weapon of choice is. Like, you gonna kill this person with a blood object. Uh -huh. Stab him, you gonna shoot him, you gonna poison him. She put all of that thought, she let her intrusive thoughts get in the express lane and just it just drive all day long. That's I don't and she didn't even like do it a newbie person's way, like shooting him or something like that. It says she found a uh she stabbed a 26-year-old over a hundred times in the victim's home. A hundred. And see, that's that's what cops be like. 
stabbing is a is a, pa a, a crime of passion. Not because anymore. Because to get up that close to somebody to stab them is, and then to do it that many times is like, what happened? T tell us what happened. Why why a hundred times? Like it seems like they're in a relationship. How, tell how a person was stabbed a hundred times because I feel like if you if you're just doing this at some point you would hit the same hole just by like probability, right? So like. <laughs> Unless he had a hundred pricks in his chest, how do you count? You know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. Maybe it's a, it's a question for a uh, ME. <laughs> There's no probability. You got Wait, are you saying they count the stabs? I guess I they would, think, huh? That's the only way to know. Maybe, maybe because some of them are longer than the other, they figured that that's where one went in and came out. Especially yeah, it's probably, even ready. if you stab in the same area, you probably can't get the same slit in. That's a funny question. I just got questions. Like, do you flip them over and then do the other side? <laughs> <laughs> you, you season in a piece of chicken breast? What do you do? Because <laughs> you said, like, you might run out of places and be like, all right. I yeah. I don't, I don't know. Like, I, 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 I really have a questions for you. I have a lot of questions for MB, but, you know, maybe we'll find one and get them on the show because I, I do have questions. My question is, what show did it? You know, I want to see this shit. That's a hell of a recommendation. <laughs> what show was you watching? The which which show was door, <laughs> The Killer Within. <laughs> <laughs> she really, like, put it to practice. And that's crazy. Like, she didn't just... I mean, it sounds like she could have killed more than one person. What if that wasn't even her first time? Mm. Yeah, that's just what she told the cops. That's crazy. And if you look at her, it don't look like she got it in her. Ah, uh, yeah. Those be the freakiest or the craziest. Those be the ones that got it in them, though. <laughs> she takes the glasses off and she gets the, gets the business, baby. That's insane. It's, it's, it's so it's, hard to kill somebody now, I would imagine, with so much forensic and, science. And cameras. And cameras. Like, in London, them shits is everywhere, Bert. Mm -hmm. They are everywhere. So it's like, if you kill somebody knowing that now, you really wanted that person to be unalive. Right. Because there have been like people who were caught by the the target cameras or just just not even like people like wait, like looking to catch a robber or a murderer, just yeah. cameras. They're just out there. And I feel like Ring, Ring definitely saved that because I didn't know a lot of people who had home surveillance unless they were like balling. But now you got yeah. rings in like apartment buildings and stuff like it's 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 not worth it. <laughs> it's not yeah. worth it. <laughs> Let that nigga have it. <laughs> Just don't fuck with him no more. It is not worth it, man. It does make me a little nervous about the stuff that I watch, though, because it's like a, a part of me wants to believe, like, oh, she was always a murderer. Maybe she always had these feelings. Maybe that's why she watched true crime. Mm -hmm. And now she's saying, like, oh, out of curiosity. But what if? She was just started watching it and then got interested. Like how if you start watching basketball, you might start playing. <laughs> and what if it like what if that just shows that the shit that you consume actually yeah. affects your brain? I mean, it could. It could. But that again, I'd say I'd say normal people, people who I, I would say eight out of ten human beings are gonna hear those intrusive thoughts and not let them in. You think about even if you even if you go further than some, you think about everything it's gonna take. It's like, bro, it's like I thought about it. It's limp. I'm like, how would I do it? Right? Wouldn't do it in my own place. Too much forensics to get distributed all over the place. So I would want to do it somewhere where it's not attached to me in any way, form, or fashion. I still would want it to be clean. So I now I gotta go get the plastic, right? And if you want to do it right, then the best thing to do is separate the body. So now you got to go get appliances, right? Now you at Home Depot buying a, a saw that can go through bone, right? Which, yeah, people do that every day, right? You got to buy the plastic. You're going to have to buy plastic for the person and plastic for your car. Or you're going to have to buy buckets to move the dismembered parts throughout wherever you're putting them at. You want to separate them if you're not going to burn them. If you're going to burn them, you still got to dig through or pull the teeth out before you do that because that's not going to burn. All right. Best thing to do is just don't do it unless you got the time to actually cut the fingertips and the toenails out and pull the teeth out so the person is absolutely unrecognizable. But what do I know? 
you know, what, what do I know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you really have thought about this. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> I know what I saw on Dexter. That, there was a couple things in there that even he didn't do. <laughs> Sheesh. Okay. I didn't know teeth don't burn, but that makes sense. I, that, that's mm. okay. Teeth, teeth can you know it, it, it? You have to get to a high degree to get that to burn. Um, but also, like if they have any dental work, like if they have metal fillings, that type of stuff shows up on an ME report, and that's how they're able to identify people through dental records. So, but why does it matter if they're identified if they're all burnt up? Because, so you can still tell who the person was. Right, but that doesn't hurt the murderer. Yeah, but it could. So let's say that they identify some person that I was beefing with publicly oh, right, two right. weeks ago. And they was like, well, this, he was going back and forth with this person online with the woo. So that and then that makes me a person of interest because I might have been one of the last people this person engaged with in a negative way. Here's what's fucked up. And I'm, I'm going to preface this with, <laughs> with saying that this is fucked up. In a purely creative exercise, I'm going to be thinking about this all day. I'm going to be like, well, how would I, how would I kill somebody? <laughs> just a an exercise, clearly. But that was just like, God damn, I was thinking those a lot. How, yeah. how, would, I, how would I do it? Let's, let's, let's. I, bro, it just seems like it's so, plan. it's so time consuming. And then you have to, like, my biggest, outside of, like, all the work and then just not being able to live with that guilt, now you have to live with the fear of being found out every day for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And you can't tell anyone. Because even if you killed the person for the better good, if you tell one person, it's likely that one person is going to tell another person. So you got to walk around with that for the rest of your life. That's heavy. That's a heavy lift, man. I don't want that. Okay, I figured it out. Plan a extravagant dinner with all your friends and mm -hmm. then the person you want to kill, right? Also be the chef. Poison that toast, right? The mm -hmm. toast, toast scene, poison, right? You host the dinner at a lavender farm. You bury said body that was poisoned under the lavender, right? The fields of lavender, no smell, mm. no trace, mm. alibi, mm. he was at the dinner. Right, okay, Pat, you're going to jail so fucking fast, okay? Mm -hmm. It's so fucking fast. First of all, no I one realized public, halfway through I made it public. No yeah. one is publicly inviting their enemy to anything just so they would have other witnesses around saying they squashed it, right? That's mm -hmm. number one. Number two, if if the person was last seen there, that's where they're gonna start the investigation. Once they go through the fields of lavender, because they're going to, they're gonna see the disturbed dirt. The dirt that you're gonna remove to plant him under or to to, to put him there, you have to put that dirt back and it's going it's to disturb lavender. And uh Nah, they're going to they gonna be able to tell. And then, okay, you're walking on this dirt. they are going to be footprints. And even if you drag the body or you put it in a wheelbarrow, there are going to be tracks from that. You're going to have to literally go out there with the rake and remove the disturbed ground from the digging and from your walking and dragging or wheeling the body. TNT on a dock. Okay, think about it like this. <laughs> you put a bunch of TNT on a dock in a shed. Hey. You invite that guy boating. You guys are driving. He hits the ramp. You turn. He goes into the shed. Right. Blows up. No one knows about him. They just think it was a boating accident. Where so, are you going to buy this TNT? Utah. I met a dude who blows up caves and mountains with TNT mm -hmm. and he says it's not that expensive. It is not. I would imagine if you know how to make it, right? But then that means you yeah. have to get the equipment or the ingredients for it. Now, when you get that ing <laughs> ingredients, you have to sign up, right? You have, you have to sign up. So at some point, your name is going to be on a paper trail. 
and it's going to lead back to you. And you're not going to be good at making explosive on your first try, which means that you're going to have to reach out to somebody to get help. And when you get the help, now you've already told a person about your plan, even if you didn't tell them verbatim. Now you could YouTube it, right? YouTube it, like, you know, find anything on, on the internet. But now that's going to leave a paper trail on your computer. It shows that you look up how to make homemade explosions, how to make an explosion strong enough to blow up that bro. It's it's but they knew you know, the explosion happened, they didn't know about him because he, he was blown to bits. So you think that he's gonna explode like a cartoon character and there's not gonna be anything left of him. I just mm -hmm. don't think it's gonna work like that. I could be wrong, but I don't think it's gonna work like that. I was thinking about this last week because I was watching cartoons, Makes I love sense. watching. Okay. Cartoons on Boomerang, and I was like, you know, who should sue is Wiley Coyote. He should have oh, yeah. a class action suit against Acme because mm -hmm. nothing they sent him worked like it was supposed to. It never did. He he should get millions. Yeah, how did they even? Do they have anything that worked? Is there any like episode where like he shoots a gun and the gun just goes off? You know, this man fired a cannon one time at the road one. At and the cannon itself went backwards and the ball was just right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have a theory that he's the CEO of that company and he's just he's just using all the prototypes and he can't sue because he's he's the and he it's his company, so he's fucking it up. <laughs> I will say they have fast shipping service, man, because they was getting to this shit to him in the middle of the desert, like CEO. CEO. That's what I'm saying. He had ties in that company. That's why he has he hasn't blown the whistle. The road runner. They said, <laughs> "How did I say?" They said, "The road runner." Hey, man, listen. That's how I you said do it. This with <laughs> I didn't. I didn't hear it. Damn. Yeah, man. The role runner. Hey, man, listen. I'm country and I don't care. I ain't going to make me feel bad. You guys are... Role runner. I can't think of a word, but cut it out. <laughs> you just... You just got an error? <laughs> you, you speech elitist? Yeah. So that was that more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Not helping your case. Yeah, you just he got an error. He was like... No, oh, never mind. Nah. I was trying to think of a word like a word racist or a speech racist, but I couldn't put two words together fast enough. So I just bah humbug. All right, we got time for one more. One more. Let's do it. Okay, so I can't. I, I forget. Do you like cruise ships or not? Nah? Yes, overall. Cruise okay. Is been on a couple of them, but I've been on them as entertainment. I imagine being on them as uh, a party goer would be a little different. Because as, as an entertainer, I have access to different things. I have access to everything where I would imagine certain things on the cruise. You have to pay to get certain. I don't know. I don't know how it works, honestly. Uh -huh. um, and my quarters were different. So I don't know, but I do. I do like partying for a week. I do like the buffet thing. I do like entertainment. So I would imagine it's fun. The only thing I don't like cruises about cruises is that moment when you look out and it's only water around. Right. Like that moment is so humbling and scary to show you, you how by yourself you are. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because even if there was land that was uh, like within eyesight. It's comforting, but it's still like, I ain't about to swim over there. I'll be dead <laughs> in, in like 20 minutes. Man. So there's a crazy uh, scam going on right now. Uh, and it's pretty insane. So there's thousands of families that were left stranded with no place to stay uh, because they sold and rented out their homes. Um and they use that money to put a six figure down payment to live on a ship for three years. So this is a a, a company is called Life at Sea. Ooh. And apparently there was like a it was the, the experience of a lifetime. Three years traveling the world from the comfort of a cruise ship at prices that rivaled regular living expenses. So people were basically putting their um 
putting their houses up, putting down payment to live on the, the, the ship. And uh, I guess it says the dream is over for passengers who'd signed up for life at sea cruises. Um, they're supposed to go on an inaugural three-year voyage. And after weeks of ghosting its customers, the company acknowledged uh, to pa passengers that there was brrr, no ship. There was no ship, and uh, it canceled the departure, and it's vowing to refund those who'd signed up for cruises, costing up to hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, and all they really said was, we are sorry. It, it says some of the passengers who booked some of the, these cabins sold are still in Istanbul, and... Uh, having made uh, their way there ahead of the original departure date. Others say they will have nowhere to return to, having sold or rented out their homes in anticipation of the round-the-world voyage, as well as, um, you know, they basically quit their jobs, uh, sold their house, and not only is it not happening, there is no ship at all. So, that's pretty wild. I don't know the whole story, right? So I can just, I, I have questions though. Like when they went to the website, was there not a ship there that they were being told they were going to be on? I'm sure they probably had some stock photos or something like that. Like I need to know how much the ship, our average ship, cruise ship costs about $496 million, right? That's, that's, that fits about 1,000 to 2,000 people. Well, 555 million fits between 2,000 and 3,000 people. But if we're going to be living here, that could include families or whatever. So realistically, I'm thinking something probably about 734 million. I need to see all the pictures. I need to see, I, I need to do a walkthrough. Because I ain't going to buy no home without doing no walkthrough. Right. I was like, when can we come check out the ship, baby? I, I, I need to see this. Yeah, are well, you going to just see it for the first time the day of <laughs> no. and find out it's not up to your, your liking? Cause Man, I need to see everything, buddy. I, I want to see the blueprints. I want I want the blueprints framed so I can hang it on my new walls in my new house for the next three years. Nah, bro. That's actually, that's actually very crazy because if you had people putting down six-figure deposits – everybody and you didn't get the boat ain't even built like i'm trying to think like was do you think that was a scam from the start or do you think it was just something that happened where the money didn't come in on time and they just had to say i i think that they had the money unless they had because like what company has the money outside of you know actual cruise ship companies has the money for a a, a cruise ship 500 million Five hundred million. That's just the cost of the boat. We're not talking about right. food expenses. We're not talking about the crew. What you got to pay the crew? Mm -hmm. All of it, bro. Insurance or something like that. And so if they had, I, I didn't. I don't think they had enough money. That's I crazy. Because I remember, I remember we had a. Um, I think it was on this show when we talked about that old couple who sold their house, and they were just on a cruise ship. It wasn't like a a cruise ship that that was the point of the company was to live there. They were just jumping from cruise ship to cruise ship. And I think they were living like a hundred dollars a day, but between both of them. Um, and that story went super viral. So it sounds like this company made that like a reality for a lot of people, theoretically. All right. So if you got 2000 people, right. Mm -hmm. That are paying a hundred thousand, which probably isn't the case because probably at least half of those people are the spouse of the person that's paying. But let's just, right. let's just try, right? 2,000 2, people, and that's at 100,000, right? And that's just a guess of what they were paying. But that's only $200 million. That's not paying for the ship. So they had to either have investors or they were expecting there would be more money. They're like, bro, like, right. no. Yeah, that's true. Because they were saying that it rivaled just regular living. So you selling your house for three years worth of housing. Yeah. I don't. And, and it was competitive prices. Like, yeah, it sounded like something that should have failed way before 
Bro, I can't see me living like a moving house sounds good in theory, but like on water all the time. Like I, I just I don't know, man. I, I I know these 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 some of these ships are amazing and they they like traveling cities, but like the water is it gonna be clean enough every time in the jacuzzi or the pool? How often are they cleaning this? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the food. What if what what if we have another COVID right? And now remember when COVID first hit. And people were coming back from cruise ships, and they were being held on the cruise ships because they had to be quarantined. Because people oh, were coming right. back, and they trapped on this. I think I think people were trapped on there for almost two months. Like and it was docked. The yeah, it was docked. But the, actually, they weren't they weren't allowing them to dock. So they they probably were out uh, like how those ships were in Alaska. They were just in the water close because uh -huh. nobody was accepting them. So it's like that bro, would make drive me crazy. You're just looking at land and you can't get off. Your stuff is all done. That's because when you're done with the vacation, you're done. You know, you're yeah. just like, all right, for sure. I'm, I, I want to get in my own bed. I want to go back and just, just be on the coast of Long Beach. That would be trash. Yeah. I don't think I could live on a on a cruise ship. That sounds like it might be fun for like a month or something at the most. But three yeah. years is a huge commitment yeah. to not it's, have seen it. Like Tara said, like you got to be, I have to, it has to be like a zombie apocalypse or something like that to make you want to stay on a cruise ship for three years. Right. Or I'm, I'm running for the law. <laughs> Damn. When I'm running for the law. They ain't going to think to check no cruise ship. There's the, oh, I'm here, baby. That would be that'd the be, only way. That'd be tough until a zombie. Okay. If no zombies are on board, can it, can somebody die and turn into a zombie or they would need to be bit by an actual zombie that was on land? That's well, it depends on how people started becoming zombies. If it's the airborne, it, 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 it could get you. If it's in the water, it potentially can get you. If it's anything with biological uh, warfare, it's, it's a possibility that you could be affected or already affected. Damn. We don't know. Like I, I was watching, man, I was so into the walking dead <clears throat> and when they 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 fuck everybody up because like people were dying and they would turn into zombies, but they were dying from natural causes. So right. not even getting bit. So no matter what you were gonna turn. And I, I fell off the series before I got to find out like how it actually happened, how it started. But uh -huh. if they figure that part out, bro, it's over for us. It's over. Yeah, that's that's that would be a shitty place to be <laughs> on a cruise with a hell of zombie outbreaks. You'd be like, all right, this did not work out. Yeah, nah, man. No, I think I'll live in. I I would rather live in a hotel than on than on a cruise ship. Yeah, yeah, facts. Yeah, that makes total sense. Some hotels be busting. They'd be like, yeah. "You ever stayed at a hotel that was so nice? You went back to your spot and you was just like, damn, yeah. <laughs> absolutely." <laughs> like, damn, I miss I miss room service. I I, I would say that hotels and resorts is like, nigga, I will sell dope here to figure out how to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just sell dope to the the, the crew consistently. <laughs> they we be docking. They going to get. They going to get food and shit. I'm going to pick up new drug supplies. I, yeah, yeah this, let's just get this going right here. This is what I need. I don't. I don't want to go back. Uh, that's a crazy ass story, man. That's some people are just literally homeless in Istanbul, and it says they were supposed to dis depart in on November first. So. Ugh. That's kind of crazy to wait. November first of what year? <laughs> this year? How, how did I got the ship and they were supposed to go last month? Man, better go over to Italy. They selling them houses for a dollar. I heard about that. Yeah, I, I, I follow a couple pages on Instagram. This should be following mm -hmm. the going in the houses and stuff like that. Like this one, you can get for a dollar. It's probably gonna take you know ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars of renovations, but. The, the country gonna pay you to live there and they're selling the, the houses for mad cheap, man. Mm -hmm. Shit, I'll be over there eating the freshest mozzarella. <laughs> Shit, I mean, you're already homeless, you might as well. <laughs> well you got a roof, baby boy. <laughs> some people, are, some people are probably gonna twist that experience into like a cool life. They're just like, yeah. right, now we in now we in Turkey with nowhere to go. Let's just pivot, baby. Yeah, let me see what that pivot game like, man. Well, 
that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening to another episode. Uh, hope you guys had a fantastic time with us as we did with you as always. Shout out mm -hmm. to Uncommon Goods for sponsoring this episode. Shout out to the More Mob Scary Squad and everybody that's watching it. Rewatch Gang, thank y'all. We appreciate you pulling up. As always, I'm to hear more. I'm Patrick Cloud. We'll see you next time on the next episode of Damn Internet. You scary. Thanks for Peace, guys. Up.